Secretary of State Mike Pompeo traveling to New York later today, this to meet with the top North Korean official to retired four-star Navy Admiral Robert Natter on if President Trump's hardball tactics are paying dividends. Uh, sir, does it look like maybe uh, President Trump will get the, the deal that he sort of uh, wants to get and even maybe the summit uh, uh, on the original deadline? Well, I think he's on a trajectory to uh, uh, have an opportunity to uh, achieve the objectives here and start negotiations, serious negotiations with North Korea. Now, what do you make of these overtures? Now, when this whole process began, uh, the, the critics said, hey, listen, uh, Kim Jong-un's father, his grandfather, they made overtures to the West. They took money from the West. They signed agreements that they never intended to, uh, to fulfill. Uh, but what do you make of the series of overtures that are historic? Uh, now we've had two meetings at the DMZ, including one over the weekend on the North Korean side. Uh, I keep talking about the bro hug. Uh, we've had uh, sort of commitments, verbal commitments from North Korea with respect to denuclearization. Are these signs, can we take these as signs that perhaps this time it could be different? Well, I, I think that's our only option here. We need to go into this clear-eyed, ensuring that uh, there are actions related to uh, expectations. And as long as both parties do that, then we've got uh, an opportunity to uh, come to an agreement here. But to go in with wishes only uh, will not accomplish our objectives. And that meeting, in, in this meeting in New York, isn't that the objective of this meeting to sort of set the framework, uh, put that together, uh, you know, make it so that uh, when these two world leaders sit down, uh, there's no, no gamesmanship, no, no, no brinksmanship, that they both understand the objective, it's been laid out clearly, uh, and perhaps that gives us a better chance of coming away with something. Yeah, you know, it's hard to uh, separate gamesmanship from negotiating. Uh, having said that, this meeting, as you suggest, is very important so that expectations can be laid out and then both sides go back and say, all right, how do we get to the point where we can satisfy their expectations and we can ensure that they're satisfying ours? Well, what are their expectations that you think at this moment? Well, look, Kim Jong-un went to school in Scandinavia, so he knows how a uh, society and a, and a nation can exist and can prosper. Uh, he knows he's not doing that, and his people certainly aren't either. So I would expect that that to be one of his top priorities. He also wants to uh, not have a threat to the South and with the support of the United States. That's got to be another objective. We obviously have uh, objectives, and I, we're, we're well aware of what those are. And so coming together, negotiating so that both sides can ensure that uh, their expectations are, uh, if not guaranteed, right. have a high probability of success. With all due respect, though, um, knowing that millions of North Koreans died from starvation, we understand the neglect. We saw an elite soldier defect, his body riddled with worms. Mm. Uh, should we really believe that Kim Jong-un wants prosperity for his people when he always will have a certain amount of income, he'll always have a certain amount of wealth? Uh, uh, it could it really could he have some sort of epiphany? Do you think that's really possible? Well, I, I don't want to read too much into uh, what the other side is thinking, what their expectations are. Uh, our negotiators, ultimately, the president's got to go in there with a clear-eyed objective and sit down and ensure that whatever is negotiated can be assured and and, and inspected on both sides. Quite frankly. All right, uh, sir. Uh, Admiral Natter, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Charles.